They are really a close couple, aren't they? Well, we're like that too, though. Then my husband casually embraced my shoulder. It made me extremely uncomfortable. Don't touch me. Haven't learned everything. I can no longer forgive this man. Yeah, but those two are about to experience hell. Because of you? Huh? I said that and brushed off my husband's head. Sorry to keep you waiting. Here is a surprise gift for today's birthday boy. Saying that, I opened the door to hell. My name is Aubrey, a 32-year-old office worker. I've been married for four years to my husband Tim, and we have a three-year-old son. We're a family of three. Ever since we moved to my husband's home down three years ago, my life took a turn for the worse. My husband is the eldest son. And I'd always said that someday we would return to his hometown. Even though I didn't expect it happened this soon, I was prepared for that future to come because I loved my husband. But the catalyst was the death of my father-in-law, who had a heart condition. My husband quit his job without consulting me, saying it was because he was worried about his mother. I understand that you're worried about your mom, but. Quitting your job and coming here? How do you plan on making a living? I was also working, but living expenses were difficult with just my salary. Then my husband Tim said, "The salary will be lower than now, but says we'll be living together. We won't need living expenses. It'll be fine. My friends from hometown are all good guys, and Aubrey, you will get used to it quickly too." I've always been a cautious person, and I admired my husband's optimistic nature before we got married. However, after getting married, there were times when I got frustrated with my husband's impulsive actions. Fortunately, there was a branch of my workplace within commuting distance from my in-laws' house, so I requested a transfer. We managed to finish the move in a hectic manner. And as for my mother-in-law, she was an incredibly kind person. We had agreed to divide the household chores, but to be honest, my mother-in-law took on most of the responsibilities. I'm sorry all the time. You are a lifesaver. He <laughs> hits fine, really. Aubrey, you work full time, and I have spare time with my part-time job. Managing work and raising a child. It is truly amazing. Thank you for your hard work, but you don't push yourself too hard when things get tough, okay? How many times have I wished to hear those words of encouragement from my husband? Since returning to his hometown, my husband has been away from home more often. He often made silly excuses about being busy with his friends, and he would get scolded by his mother as well. About I had concerns about being in an unfamiliar place. I adopted well to my new workplace and relationship. However, there was something that I just couldn't understand. Ha! Huh, again? As I said, my husband responded optimistically as usual. Oh come on! Don't say that. It's also a chance for you to make friends, right? My husband's friends from his hometown. Were close knit, and they had birthday parties every month, rotating among themselves. Even if I attended, being an outsider, I felt out of place. While I was left out, my husband would enthusiastically engage in nostalgic conversations with his friends. Among them, there was a couple that my husband got along with, but I didn't like them, or rather. I particularly disliked the wife. Her name was Naomi, and she was my husband's childhood friend. Naomi's husband Harry was also my husband's childhood friend, in the same age as him. Aubrey, let's be friends, okay? It's surprising for Tim's wife, you know. You're so elegant. As she said that. Naomi poked my husband, laughing and playfully teasing him. 
I always thought she was too familiar in front of her husband's wife. This couple had a daughter the same age as our son. Unlike the cheerful mother Naomi, their daughter was a quiet child. But since they attended the same nursery school, she quickly became friends with our son. This led to Naomi frequently bringing her daughter to visit my in-laws' house to play together. Avery, why did you meet Tim? What do you like about Tim? Naomi often asked questions that made me feel like I had to explain myself. Noticing that I didn't look pleased, she seemed to realize. Oh, sorry. If I made you uncomfortable, words can be difficult. I'm really sorry. She would apologize in such a manner as well. During that time, when I came home from work, I saw a man and a woman having a headed argument at the entrance of the house. Shut up. Look good of me. The one rising his voice was my husband team. Wait a minute. We're not finished talking yet. Naomi was the one in tears. I was deeply shaken, but managed to speak calmly. What are you two doing here? In response to my words, my husband wore a guilty expression and said, It's nothing. He forcefully entered the house, leaving me alone with Naomi. An awkward atmosphere filled the air. I asked Naomi, Did my husband do something? But no. No, it's nothing. It's unrelated to you. Seeing that, Naomi hurriedly left. As I rushed into the house, my husband was sitting there, laughing and watching TV, as if nothing had happened. That night, after my mother-in-law and our son had gone to sleep, I confronted my husband. I'll be direct. Are you cheating on me? I said it coldly. What? That's out of nowhere. I'm not cheating. I've always been faithful to you, Aubrey. He tried to embrace me, but I pushed his hand away. Enough with the excuses. You're cheating, aren't you? With Naomi. Upon hearing my words, my husband's eyes widened, and he started laughing hysterically, clutching his stomach. Ha! <laughs> me? And Naomi? That's absolutely ridiculous. Are you still bothered by what happened today? It was just a casual conversation and Naomi exaggerated her reaction. Naomi is like a little sister to me, and there are no romantic feelings involved. It's impossible. My face turned red with frustration as my husband continued to laugh. Huh, <sighs> ah, I'm telling you, Aubrey, I would never cheat. Please, believe me. For a brief moment, my husband managed to put on a serious expression. He's lying. My husband had a habit whenever he lied. I was burning with a desire to revenge against my husband. The next day, there was a usual birthday party. This time, it was Harry, Naomi's husband, who was the center of attention. Children were not present at this gathering. It was meant for adults only held during the daytime when they could have left their children at school or daycare. Ultimately, it was just a pointless gathering where they used someone's birthday as an excuse to drink and make a fool of themselves. There were times when I ignored their absurd request to take a day off and attend such gatherings. It was just too ridiculous. Happy birthday, Harry! Naomi handed him a gift and they smiled at each other. Tim, watching them, couldn't help but comment. They really are a close couple, weren't they? Well, we're like that too, though. As he said that, he familiarly puts his arm around my shoulder. I forcefully pushed his hand away. Yeah? But it's because of you that those two are about to experience hell from now on. Huh? Ignoring my husband's reaction, I headed towards Naomi and her husband. Sorry to keep you waiting. Here is a surprise gift for today's birthday boy, Harry. I shouted loudly, 
surprising everyone since I'm usually quiet. And an instant, everyone around me became curious and interested in my behavior. Harry, happy birthday? The surprise is in sight. Please, go ahead and open it. Oh, oh, okay. What could it be? Harry, whom I rarely spoken to, looked a little puzzled. Is this... a projector? Harry looked blankly at the gift. Is a surprise for me and Aubrey, do you? Naomi said that and connected her phone to the projector. Oh, could it be a celebratory video? By the way, when did you two become so close? My husband tried to say something, but I pretended not to hear him. A celebratory video? If it was something cute like that, he must have been nice. The expressions of the people in the room, who had been excitedly gazing at the wall, quickly turned grim. Their gazes immediately shifted to a particular person. Is this... Harry? And he's with. Let's definitely not Naomi, right? One of our friend's words made Naomi's husband pale completely. Oh, wait, what? He seemed too overwhelmed and couldn't find his voice. The video that was being projected showed Harry entering a hotel with an unfamiliar woman. Hey, Harry, who is this? Naomi calmly questioned Harry, who remained silent. Then my husband team spoke up. Nah, nah. This is all edited, right? Is really well done, though. He started joking around. Following my husband's actions. Yup, yeah, it must be edited after all. I almost fell for it. Ken, who is from the same company as my husband, said. The people around were, now, completely confused by their reactions. Naomi ignored them and started playing the next video. Huh, is this me? My husband, who had been joking around just moments ago, turned pale like Harry. It was a footage from a car's dashcam. Tim, with a frustrated look on his face, was stuck into some more on our phone. I came all the way to the neighboring town to meet a woman. I met through an app. But she didn't show up. It's so damn irritating. Oh, Ken, you too? Well, cheers to both of us, I guess. Many people in the room seemed to grasp the situation. No one in the room believed it was edited. Disdainful glares pierced my husband and Harry. The two of them seemed uncomfortable that they would shrink and disappear at any moment. Oh, and there is also a version with the co-worker Ken. Should we watch it? In an instant, a woman who seemed to be that person's wife shouted. The place was in chaos, resembling a hellish scene. Obery, does not hit. Naomi is a misunderstanding. The idiotic man tried to say something, but our answer was clear. Divorce, please? Yeah, there's no other option. Let's go back a little in the story. The day after the argument between my husband and Naomi, I was at the nursery to pick up our son when Naomi, who had also come to pick up her child, approached me. She told me that she had something important to discuss, so we exchanged contact information. Abby direct. Kimmy's cheating on you. I had noticed my husband's infidelity, but I had mistakenly thought it was with Naomi. So, I was surprised. This is what Naomi told me. Ha is my husband, Tim, and that Ken. These three of them. Naomi's voice trembled with anger. The content was so disgusting that it made my body shiver. From that day on, Naomi and I decided to gather evidence of their infidelity. We were able to gather evidence quickly. It turned out that they were pretending to be single with a neap. 
I felt like throwing dap when I saw them entering the hotel. But having Naomi by my side was truly reassuring. By the way, I was the one who had disguised myself as the woman who didn't show up. We confronted the three idiotic men, who were now bowing their heads in shame. It's truly disgusting. I never want to see your face again. My strong words made my husband look a bit annoyed. But this doesn't count as cheating. It's just playing around. Don't be so angry, Aubrey. Come on, cheer up. As my husband tried to put his arm around my shoulder, I forcefully pushed him away. Do you realize how you only touch me like this when it's inconvenient for you? Disgusting. Don't touch me. My husband became enraged because he didn't like my attitude. Fine. Then why don't you just go back to your parents' place? Our son will be raised here, by me and my mom. My body trembled at my selfish husband's words. The birthday celebration came to an end, but our friends cut ties with the husbands. By the way, even when we return home, there was no apology from my husband. He seemed to assume that I had forgiven him. After a couple of days, my husband called me repeatedly on my phone. Hey, what's up? I responded cheerfully. Aubrey, where are you right now? I can't get inside a house. Team's voice was filled with panic. What's happening? That house is no longer your family home, you know? Huh? What are you talking about? As Team tried to play dumb, I decided to hand the phone to someone else. Team, mom, I sold that house, you know. You said you were worried about me and came back to the hometown, but you weren't even home. You've caused trouble for Aubrey too. Your belongings are packed in boxes outside. Collect them yourself. Tim seemed to finally grasp the situation after her words. Aubrey, I'm sorry. Please come back. Ken and I weren't told not to come to work anymore starting tomorrow. I'm unemployed now. Tim sobbed uncontrollably on the phone. Regarding the divorce, I planned to consult with the lawyer, and I made it clear about alimony and child support. Ignoring my husband wailing, I hung up the phone. In fact, I had already discussed this with my mother-in-law earlier. She took care of everything while I was tailing my husband. Let's sell this house too. I can't stand that shameless son anymore. We're caught in ties with him. And my mother-in-law quickly made a real estate deal. I was surprised by her efficiency. Everything had been planned, but the only ones in the wear were the individuals themselves. They needed to learn a lesson about respecting women. Afterward, I started living with my son and my mother-in-law. In fact, my own parents had already passed away, and I only had my sister and our husband at my parents' house. Both Naomi's and Ken's also went through messy divorces. But they were successfully finalized. I heard that the three men started blaming each other and then ended up fighting, leading to a police intervention. I couldn't find words to express my disappointment. From my perspective, they were all scumbags. Since then, Naomi and I have maintained a good relationship. Well, Tim has always been a scumbag. So it was worried when he brought a seemingly serious girl like you. I've been concerned all along. We left together. I don't need dad. As long as I have mom and grandma. And my son sat with a smile, which brought tears to my eyes. Moving to an unfamiliar place, I experienced the hell, but it wasn't all bad. My mother-in though remained kind. And I found myself relying on her. With this new and precious family, 
I am determined to move forward into the future. Hey, Parasite, are you watching this? Saying that, my husband waved his hand towards me with his smartphone screen. His face was red and it was clear that he was quite drunk. Then, another person appeared on the screen next to him. Come on, Claire, let my brother go already, you parasite. That was my sister and no Amber. These two call me a parasite who has no choice but to rely on my husband's income as a full-time housewife. At that time, they made a video call to me while drinking at their parents' house on purpose. I let out a deep sigh. Hey, you were drinking at your parents' house now, right? Are your parents there? Yeah, they're here. Why? Can you let me talk to your father? Huh, why? Are you planning to tattle on me, to my dad or something? My sister in those high-pitched and carefully voiced spoke up for from next to him. Oh, well, it's fine, isn't it? Our dad is on our side. Daddy? Claire wants to talk to you? I couldn't stop laughing at the voice of my sister in though calling my father in though. I can finally correct their misunderstanding that I had been enduring. I am Claire, a 32-year-old full-time housewife. I used to work at a major advertising agency. But shortly after getting married, my husband asked me to become a full-time housewife. Hey, Claire, can you become a full-time housewife? I'll support you. Huh? I was surprised by his words, and my husband took my hand gently. He was a completely different person back then, much kinder than he is now. Cause we got married, right? If we want a happy home, it's better for one of us to stay at home and take care of things. But I can't do housework. And all I can do is work. You, on the other hand, are good at that kind of stuff, unlike me, right? Well, I'm not really that good. What are you talking about? Didn't you cook for me some Italian on your day off before? It was really delicious. And it made me feel so much better. I really respect and love that about you. So, please, quit your job, okay? Seeing my husband asking me like that, I reluctantly made up my mind. Okay, I understand. I don't know if I can quit right away, but I'll talk to my company. Thanks, Claire. I appreciate it. My husband's face lit up with joy, and I couldn't help but wonder how much this meant to him that I became a housewife. I thought it was a little strange, but seeing how happy my husband was, I decided to give in. I liked my job at the advertising agency, and I had just started getting assigned to plan advertising campaigns. So, I had mixed feelings about leaving my job. However, because we had just gotten married, I wanted to respect my husband's wishes. Six months after our marriage, I quit my job. In our early stages of marriage, my husband always expressed gratitude for my help and the household chores. However, after about three years, he stopped saying thank you and being making comments that blamed me for not having a job. You're lucky. You can live in easy life just relaxing at home. Huh? Whoa, isn't it true? Real living off the money I earn? I'm jealous. Being able to just stay at home and not work and still get by. But you're the one who asked me to become a housewife, remember? My husband looked annoyed. See? You can use my words as a shield to justify yourself? It's so easy, isn't it? Well then, if you were a housewife, focus more on household chores. You have it easier than anyone else in the world. 
since you don't work and you don't even have children. And yet, you always do things half-heartedly, don't you? He is probably referring to the frozen foods I received from our neighbor. What are you talking about? The frozen food? They own the grocery store, remember? They gave us a lot. So I don't want to waste it? I'm trying to save money on groceries and save for our future. When I said that, my husband stuttered. He had been talking about saving money to build a house, so we had discussed the saving. But, well, I, I know that without you telling me. But saving money and making half-hearted dishes are not related. If you received frozen food, you can use it, but try to be more creative. Make it look like a more elaborate dish. I sighed at my husband's complaint. He must think that putting a necessary effort into something is a good value. I've never made things difficult for my husband by cutting corners on cooking, cleaning, or laundry. I shouldn't have to be called the one who has it the easiest in the world despite this. I thought that, but I didn't want to argue. So I said, understood. I already knew that my husband's change in attitude had its roots in work-related stress. He has a selfish side that makes him think, why am I the only one going through such a tough time when I'm tired and struggling? He only sees his own hardships and doesn't think much about others. This narrow-mindedness makes him oblivious to the effort that I put into household chores. That's why he started thinking, I work so hard, yet the money keeps disappearing because of my wife. It seems that my sister Amber, who dislikes me, also whispered bad things about me in his ear. Claire is like a parasite, isn't she? Amber, who boasts about earning a lot of money as a model, found an easy target to criticize in me who has no income. She's already in her mid-30s and doesn't know how many more years she can continue modeling. Yet, she's not capable of decent judgment. My husband, who was already small-minded, was further fueled by his sister's words and started using even more hurtful words against me. You are a parasite who has no choice but to rely on my money in my house. So don't act all high and mighty. My husband has been saying such awful things to me for years now. I try to think that there was no point in arguing, but I've reached my limit. Since my husband, Amber, and my in-laws are all here, it's a good opportunity to tell them the truth. So I asked my father in law to come over. Oh, hello, Claire. How's it going? Then, I told my father in law about the abusive words that the two had been saying to me and about my decision. Then, my father in law let out a huge sigh over the phone and yelled, What have you guys done? We were going to build a two family house and live together with Claire's money. I could feel a sudden chill from the presence on the other side of the screen. Yes, my father-in-law was right. I had enough savings to build a house. That was because I still had an income ever after quitting my job at the advertising agency. Actually, I had started freelancing from home and was making quite a lot of money. At first, it was just to pay off my student loans. After quitting my job as my husband had suggested, I couldn't repay my loans without any incomes. So I utilized my experience at the advertising agency and started searching for design jobs, including advertising. After I started working from home, my income increased rapidly and I was scouted for many projects. By the time three years had passed, 
My monthly income had exceeded $10,000. Since my husband said that he wanted to build a two-family home and live with his parents in the future, I saved most of my earnings for that purpose. I thought it would be a good use of my savings. However, I didn't tell my husband about it because I knew he had the habit of spending money recklessly. He might have suggested going on a trip or buying a large TV with my money. But I secretly told my Indos because they had always been kind to me. I continued explaining to the screen until I started being called a parasite by Wayne and Amber. I didn't mind living with you and contributing money to build a two-family home at all. But their bullying towards me has been increasing year by year. Amber even asked me to set her brother free. So, I will do as you said and set him free. I will divorce him. So please forget about the new home. When I told my father-in-law, he shouted at his son and daughter with a trembling voice that even I could feel the vibration through the phone. You too. Why do you always do things like this? We've had to apologize to many people because of your rude behavior. He exclaimed, and my mother in those voice joined in, sounding concerned. Hey, what is this? Why are you shouting like that? Wayne and Amber did it again. They spoke loudly to Claire, and now she's angry. She asked us to forget about the two-family house plan. What? No. My mother-in-law was shocked. Uh, I didn't know anything about that. So, there's nothing I can do, right? That's right. It's your fault. For staying quiet. My husband and Amber also fought back. But the father-in-law's voice grew even more intimidating. It's because you guys say rude things. Their argument continued over the phone, and I listened silently for a while before I got tired and hung up. The next day, they all came to our house together and bowed their heads in apology. Claire, I'm really sorry. Wayne and Amber were completely unaware of their rudeness. My father-in-law spoke, and my mother-in-law also chimed in. We feel so bad. We're ashamed that we didn't teach them enough. We'll make sure that they will never say something like that again. After apologizing individually, they turned their sharp gaze to my husband and Amber. Claire, I'm sorry. I was the one to ask you to become a full-time housewife, but something was going on with my job. To tell you the truth, I was demoted recently, and I said some unnecessary things because of the stress. I wasn't serious about it, you know. Besides, if you can't earn money, we'll be okay, right? Please, forget me. You didn't start your abusive words at me recently, did you? I said, and then I took out my smartphone and played back the saved audio data. Don't act so high and mighty when you're just a parasite relying on my money in my house. It's really unfair to leave off the other people's money when you have no income of your own, isn't it? You couldn't survive without depending on me, could you? Relying on others for everything might seem easy, but it's actually quite miserable. As the terrible words I received from my husband and Amber over the past few years echoed through the room. This is only a portion of what I have as data. Then my father-in-law raised his voice again. You? Did you really say such terrible things? How did you become such human beings? Well, what can we do? We didn't know we were being recorded. Amber still hadn't apologized to me even once, and her rebuttals were not only quick, 
but also poorly thought out. Despite this, Amber glared at me with sharp eyes. However, I wasn't going to give up just yet. Amber, is no use looking at me like that? What you said to me has been recorded as evidence. Even you understand what people will think when they hear it, right? I'm going to claim alimony from you and your brother based on this. Uh, alimony? Amber's voice flipped over, and my husband's tone was also disrupted as he opened his mouth again. W wait a minute, please. Don't ask for compensation. We've already apologized. This is not a joke. You can't expect me to forgive you. With just a few words of apology? Well, perhaps we should bring a third party to objectively assess this situation? Don't worry. If it's an unjustified claim, it won't go through. But, but, my husband's voice trembled with uncertainty. It's only natural. If a third party is brought in to judge such a matter, it's clear that the two would be blamed. With a troubled expression, my husband turned to his sister. Sis, you should apologize properly too. After all, it was you who started calling her a polycyte and all that. I wasn't serious. What? Are you trying to blame everything on me? Cause you are more responsible? And I already apologized, didn't I? Who's more responsible, you're saying? I sighed at their argument. It seemed that their parents felt the same way. After a while, their father scolded both of them again. Both of you, cut it out. It does matter who's at fault. Saying that, he shook his shoulders in anger. I said to him, Thank you very much for understanding. I really appreciate you, but my decision will never change. I'm going to get a divorce and claim compensation. I see. If that's what you've decided, there's nothing I can do. Anyway, we'll do our best to respond sincerely. And so, I ended up getting divorced, and of course, I also demanded compensation. My husband was struggling to pay the compensation because he had been demorted and his salary had significantly decreased. Amber seems to be struggling even more than her brother and called me crying, asking me to reduce the amount of compensation. It was no surprise since the demand for models in their late 30s were low but Amber couldn't let go of her past glory and clang onto her job as a model. Despite her drastically reduced income, she still had the spending habits of the past and had been in debt even before. I didn't sympathize with her and refused to reduce the compensation. In the end, both my ex-husband and Amber had to rely on their parents and move back to their home. Who is the real parasite here, I wonder? As for me, I resumed working at the advertising agency and obtained permission to continue working as a freelancer. With the monthly compensation and my savings, my future is secure. I can now do what I love and enjoy my life to the fullest.